Hello. Just uh, having a seat in the living room here. And uh, I had a very uh, heavy duty few classes. Oops, sorry. I'm juggling as usual. And uh, Tippy, but that's fine. Maybe tippy is better than tipsy. And um, really heavy duty couple classes. Philosophically dense, and we discussed social order. Granularity, crystals, strong and weak atomic bonds, atomic particles, cosmology. And we talked about stillness and now and silence and home and musical notation. Blank slates and gravity, and then uh, I went to type on Facebook Live. But when you type that, you're gonna start your your live feed or stream or video, and it asks you to type a few words about it. You know, a title. So, kind of have a format for doing that. I write the time and the place, and hyphen, and something about the meditation. And as I wrote the place, I wrote living room. Uh, I could have written couch or amongst the mirrors, which I showed you guys at the start, or beside the um, the dry flowers, or something. But for whatever reason, I wrote living room. And it's an interesting thing because, you know, maybe because things were so heavy duty. Um, as soon as I wrote living room, I just thought you know, living is a really deep concept. And I just got into a whole swirl about living. And, you know, meanwhile, there's a little countdown on this that says, you know, three, two, one. You know, it's about to start. Meaning, people that are watching are ready, and you don't seem to be ready. Now I'm like, oh, living, what is living? And, um,. Uh, That's okay. So I wrote contemplation meditation, I think. And the idea is uh, to take what you're contemplating to to extract from the ruminations a meditation. And so we were talking about whether or not gravity could arise and is gravity a relationship to space-time that mass has? We're talking about silence and now and truth and home. So I'm letting this royal come and I'm gonna just
just do. I just do a little meditation on this. So let's see if I can point to something better. I think it's called the septum. But I have at hand the end of my glasses, so. This, which of course extends for some uh, extent, maybe to here. So the breath comes in the nose. Out the mouth, although it could come in the nose, out the nose, but I'll just discuss it in the nose, out the mouth, and there's movement of air going past this relatively unmoving section, and so I'm going to just try and tune into this section. of the nose and of course feel how it relates to the moving air the different temperature air the different moisture air and see if I can recognize uh, in relation to the the twin moving facets, the stillness, the silence, the now, the home, Let's see if I can recognize a cosmological background to all of the wheelings of every particle. One reason that I've selected this is that it's not simply a moving contrasted to a not moving or a light and a dark or a yin and a yang and so forth. But it's it's moving, not moving, moving. It's not moving sandwiched or surrounded or doubly contrasted with the moving, with the breath. And so... My focus will be on this very narrow area of the nose as I breathe. Let's see if I can ascertain any deeper expression of the universe there. Moments later, the twin breaths become one breath. Moments before the air had been the atmosphere, and now it's my breath. It seems like an inflection point at this moment to me now, this area of the body.
I'm trying to help the moving. I'm trying to help the moving help me relate to the unmoving. I'm trying to help the changing help me relate to the unchanging. So, this is an example of letting the contemplation lead to a meditation. It's nice to come into a meditative space and state not knowing what the meditation will be and not being troubled by that. Not being hurried or pressured or bowing to that, but just saying, you know, I'll find something. And so I let the contemplation continue to bounce around in my head until this thought came to me. So, once again, I thank you for joining in.